Hello everybody and welcome back to another tutorial. Um, so today's tutorial we are going to cover kind of the basics um, overall process and tips and tricks that I might have to share um, about weight painting. This is just for the basics of weight painting so this is not for stuff very advanced like you're trying to make your own base um, and you need to weight paint all the bones or you're trying to um, you know, make something more complex. This is just kind of for the basics. I've covered how to rig and weight paint, like hair and accessories and stuff. Um, kind of threw out some of my other tutorials, um, but it was requested that I make one just dedicated completely to uh, the basics of how to weight paint. Um, and the issue that this person was having was they were trying to weight paint a head to a neck um, so that it moved properly in Blender with the neck bone. Um, the issue was that the uh, neck bone was not moving with the head and the head bone was not moving the neck, so there was a gap. Um, so that's like the specific thing that we're going to focus on doing today um, just to kind of help out that person and um, kind of use that as the process that we're going to use to talk about weight painting. Um, so yeah, just kind of covering the basics today um, using a, a, a head and a neck to try to merge. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have already inputted in um, Zempia's fit base um, as well as their savvy head, um, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, I, I'm, it, yours won't look like this, of course. I colored it funny just um, so that, you know, it, it was covered up because the one that I imported did not have the um, pre-made uh, like sports like underwear on it. So um, I just kind of threw something on it just so that it's covered up. So just ignore that. Uh, yours won't look like that. Um, but yeah, so we've I've already gone ahead and merged the armature. And the issue... Oops, I marked on the wrong thing. Is this right here if you can see so like moving the head bone is not moving the neck bone it's creating this gap so whenever your avatar looks up uh, the neck is not moving with it and it creates that that gap there and that's of course a problem so moving the neck bone is fine um, but and this is just by default I haven't done anything yet I just merged the armature sometimes the neck bone still won't move the head um, but the head bone is primarily where the issue tends to happen. Um, so basically what we need to do is weight paint the neck to move with the head. And then um, we can just triple check the uh, neck weight painting, but it looks like it's doing just fine. So, um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and get started on that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hide the armature. Um, so before I get started on fixing the issue with the neck and the head, um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of cover the the general like brushes and settings that I use for weight painting. Just um, since this video is you know just kind of covering the basics of of weight painting, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the head. I'm going to go to weight paint. Um, right now, this is what it looks like. It looks overwhelming, but what you do is you come down here to the little green triangle and um, where you know you typically look for all of your shape keys. Um, but what we're actually focusing on today is the vertex groups. So it's got this little like um, kind of like hexagonish looking symbol um, that says vertex groups. Uh, what this is is this is pretty much registering the bones um, and what the weight is on those bones. So this is on the avatar. Everything that is weighted to the the head bone, the jaw bone, and the two eyes. So um, something that I struggled with when I first started doing weight painting was I feel like everything needs to be weight painted like for the head. So like the jaw and the eyes aren't weight painted right now. Um, the way you can tell is if something is weight painted it'll have a color. Uh, it goes in warm tones by default. I think you can change it if you do like different blender or themes and settings but by default it goes by warm. So the more red um, going all the way from the red, orange, yellow, green and then down to the blue that's the weight painting and you uh, that fade is important and we'll cover that later but blue means that it's not weight painted so if you're trying to fix something like if you import your avatar for some reason the head is just not moving at all um, then you know obviously you want it to be red so if you go to weight paint it and you say that it's not red and it's blue then you know that the head is not weight painted to that bone if that kind of helps explain some stuff 
So the reason why it doesn't all have to be red is because the eyes and the jawbone are all parented to the head bone, and that's why the neck bone is moving the head. So if we come into our armature and we check, you can see these lines here. You can't see them uh, on ones that are like right up close, but we can check over here in relations. And you can see by clicking on the head bone right up here, it says parent neck. So anything that is parented, like the eye bones, parented to the head, parented to the head, anything that is parented to the primary bone, um, so like the, you know, like we said, the head is parented to the neck bone. So that's why whenever we go to move the neck bone, the head still moves with it, even though the head might not have any neck weight painting on it. Um, and that's, that's just because of parenting. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. Um, I'm not really the best at explaining that aspect, so I apologize. But so, you know, like the, like the eyes and the jaw bones are all parented to that head bone. So whenever we click on the head, it's okay that the eyes and the jaws aren't technically quote unquote weight painted to the head because the bones that they are weight painted to is connected to the head bone so it's going to move because it goes off of parents so that's just kind of to explain like the coloring and and you know what you see because that really confused me whenever I first started um so what we are going to do today is we're actually going to be looking at the neck bone or the um neck hair and it's got this is for the body so it's got all of these different shape keys right but you can see I mean I'm, I'm, I know I'm scrolling kind of fast but you can see that there is no head um, bone and that's because the base itself doesn't come with a head bone it, it stops at the neck um, and then you know you, you merge on and then you know blender does its magic and it, it moves everything together so we're gonna cover that here in a second as far as how to fix that uh, but before I do, now that we've kind of color, like covered the colors of weight painting and, and how to read the vertex groups, um, so like on here you can see like chest, elbow, fingers, arm, right? So um, that just kind of helps you know what you're looking for. I want to cover the basics and what the weight painting does. So this right here is your draw brush. This is what it defaults to. You have your blur brush, average, smear, gradient, sample weight, annotate. Annotate is just your notes. So you can like make out little notes um, if you need to do that. I don't know much about the sample weight or the gradient. Um, so we're going to be focusing on these ones up here. I don't really use this smear tool. I prefer the blur and average together. Smear kind of does that, but think of smear as like you just put a dollop of paint down on a canvas and you take your finger and you, you scrape it across. Um, it's kind of like that, but to me the average tool is a lot more reliable. Um, so if you want to play with the smear brush, you're more than welcome to. I've played around with it a long, long time ago when I first started learning weight painting. Um, to me it is not the most accurate or helpful, especially for avatars because you need this stuff to be precise, um, but with something as simple as just trying to fix a neck and a head weight painting, you don't have to be like super duper detailed about it right so but I do recommend the average and the blur tool so starting with the draw since that's the first one you have your weight which of course your weight just kind of I don't want to mess something up let me I will cover this here in a second well I'll go ahead and do it now because I don't want to forget so I'm turning on the armature I'm clicking the armature shift clicking what I want to fix which is the body because we're going to do the neck so doing that will make it look like this. So whenever you can see your bones on top of the mesh, um, that's what you're going to want to do whenever you go to weight paint that. Um, kind of like on the previous video of weight painting hair, um, you need to do that so that what you can do, I'll show you right here. So if I shift click, I'm just going to do the alks. I don't want any bones selected. Um, so I am so sorry. I did not turn on my thingamajiggers. Okay. So, um, I just did A to select all, and then if you double tap A, uh, it'll unselect all, and then shift click the one that you want to mess with. So that's going to do our, our head bone. So if we throw something on here, you can see now it's popping up the head vertex group. That's what we want. So I'm just going to kind of use that for example for now. I'm going to hide the armature so that we can focus on the brushes for now. But um, that's what you're going to need to do whenever you go to fix the head and the neck bone or you're trying to fix like some rings putting onto your avatar's fingers or something like that. Um, if the vertex group does not already exist, 
uh, then just show your armature, shift click, starting at the armature first, and then the mesh you want to fix. And then you can uh, basically create new vertex groups. Hitting the plus button, you can do it that way, but um, that's a whole different animal. So if the bone already exists, uh, then that's the best way to do it. So anyways, with the draw bone, the weight, obviously, um, if you put it down at one, you know, this is like the strongest weight. So whenever you first click it, you know, it's going to show in that red first, and then it's going to spread out to like the more negative values, I guess is the best way to put that. Um, obviously, you can go lower so that whenever you, um, you know, first put down your color, it's going to be less. Um, I primarily tr tend to keep mine up at one, um, unless you're doing really, really specific, really detailed work. Like I said, like trying to rig a full base that you created or a really, really complex asset. You don't really need to change it. Radius is just the size of your your brush here. You can see mine um, is this like off colored, like red pink color. Um, I think yours by default is white, um, but radius is this. I think there is a way to control it with like key but keyboard shortcuts. I'm sorry, I cannot talk today. Um, I'm not very good at remembering uh, shortcuts, so radius. Um, I just do this all up here. But anyways, that's what your radius is, and the radius is important because I mean, like we have it back to one. So as you can see, like, it's putting down, obviously, like, more, but it's also, the radius is also going to affect um, where those more negative uh, numbering, I guess, for the weight, the, the lighter colors of your weight painting is going to go. So radius is kind of important, because um, if you, you know, you weight paint, you know, we're trying to do the neck and we do all of this, well, now we're starting to hit the shoulders. Um, you know, we're starting to get into the chest, so that's, you know, you don't want to go too big, right? So, radius, you're, you're going to change it depending on what you're doing. Um, strength, kind of the same thing um, as the weight, but different, I guess. So, like, as you can see, like, with the strength, I keep going over it, and it's slowly starting to put on that um, warmer tone. I don't personally mess with strength too, too much, Um at least not on the draw. I will on like the blur and the, the average tools, which we'll cover here in just a second. Um, but I, I tend to leave weight and strength primarily up at one um, and then just kind of play with, if anything, I play with the strength more than I do the weight um, on the other brushes. Uh, just because the weight can stay all the way up to one so that I'm telling it like this part really, really needs to move, but kind of have it a little just barely a little bit lighter as it goes through the full radius versus I feel like weight kind of focuses more on like the center of your brush um, so the brush of course right here we have it set to uh, mix this is just by default There's all kinds of different stuff you can do here I don't ever touch it <laughs> I leave it at mix you're more than welcome to play with it if you want um, but again for you know, the kind of simple stuff that you're going to be doing for, like, your VR chat avatars, you can just leave it to mix. This is getting into a lot more complicated stuff. Stroke, um, these are my settings. I'll leave it up here. I believe this is all default. I don't remember ever messing with it, but just in case yours shows different, this is what I use. Um, fall off, we'll get to in a second, and then cursor, this is where I, I changed my color. That's it. And then the opacity, you can change that as well. So fall off is where things do get a little important. These are my settings. Um, so fall off sphere, uh, you know, you are going to be messing with the fall off uh, whenever you do weight painting. So um, I guess the, let, let me just show you. So like we, we have our brush, all right, it's set to sphere. So we're covering this side of the neck. So if we go to the other side, there's nothing there. Uh, it is obviously a 3D object, so you can start wrapping around, but we painted right here in the center of that bone on the other side and you know it's not there and that's perfectly fine um, I switch between sphere and projected pretty often depending on what you're doing so projected if we go all the way across we go to the other side hello what oh it's because I'm not on the right brush let me cover that uh, I don't use draw for this I use add um, so let me just show you add Subtract, of course, is like, you know, to erase. Darken, draw, all these different ones. I don't mess with. Um, mix is fine. 
multiply and like darken it doesn't really do much for what we're trying to do. That's again more like really advanced stuff. I tend to go to add. Um, and anytime you change your brush or something on the brush, uh, your fall off is going to revert back to what it used to be. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're trying to work on projected. I apologize, my, care, my cat's screaming in the background. So anyways, I use add when I'm trying to, of course, like add weight painting, right? So now it should, yeah, there it goes. Um, so with add, of course, you know, we're trying to put down something. So I, I always stick with add. And as you can see, when we had it on draw, it wasn't doing this, even though we had it set to projected. So add is the brush that you're going to primarily be using whenever you're doing simple fixes like this. Um, or really any weight painting for like when I rig hair or assets, I always change to add. But projected, as you can see, goes straight through. So kind of think of it like as if you're telling it to turn on your x-ray mode on your avatar. Um, so it's going to go straight through to whatever's on the other side. Versus that sphere is just going to stay on the side that you're looking at. Um, it's not going to treat it like an x-ray. And that's very important depending on what you're trying to do. Um, and the way you have your camera angled, or if you've clipped to one of these um, specific views, um, you know, you might not want it to be going all the way through. Um, so like with hair, if I'm rigging up some bangs, and if I have my hair merged all as one mesh, if I have it on projected, it's going to change the back hairs. And I don't want it like that, right? So I'll want it to sphere. Um, but if I have all my hair mesh separated and I'm trying to fix just one strand, then I will want it as projected so I don't have to worry about covering the back of the hair strand. If that kind of makes sense. But, you know, just kind of, you can see here on the, uh, you know, the base, the tutorial of, of what I mean with, with the, the sphere and projected. So that is, that is pretty important um, as far as how, what you're going to want to change it to, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, so I'm going to just throw down something so I can show you guys. So blur, this is my settings. Um, again, I tend to leave strength at the top, radius, it's fine. So I did change um, brushes, right? So we went from the draw brush to the blur brush. And so it went back to sphere. So I'm going to change it back to projected. Just keep that in mind. Every time you change it, it is going to change. Blur does exactly what you think it's going to do. It's going to blur things out. Some creators uh, will go ahead and blur straight away. I prefer to do average and then blur just because I feel like it's a little bit cleaner and a little bit um, smoother. So the reason that this is important, right, we talked about the colors with like the red is the harshest moving part and then it slowly graduates out, right? Um, let me see, where's my start post mode? So we just kind of, oh, that's the neck bone, I'm done. So as you can see, we, we, we weight painted the, the neck. We've been doing all of this on the, that head, head bone. And it's, it's working, but nobody's neck does this with the really sharp points. And this is Zempia's high poly version of the base. So it really shouldn't look like that, right? But the reason that it does is if we go back into weight painting, right? This is all red. This is all red. This is all green. This is completely blue with a little bit of light blue here. So you can see that the colors really, really make an impact on how smooth it's going to be. So if we were to start blurring, you can see it starts to kind of smooth it out, right? And that might be all you need to do. It just depends on what you're doing. Just be careful that the more you blur, right, it's going to, even if you can't see any colors down here, you're blurring it. And it is a light blue to a dark blue. So it's going to be impossible just about to see. But it's obviously making a difference. So keep that in mind. That's why the radius is so important. Um, you can mess with the strength too if you wanted to. Um, but, oh, I went too far. Delete that. So let me do it again. So I'm going to click my armature, go there. Wait, paint. Oh, I clicked the wrong button. I know I did. There we go. Back to the head bone. Okay. So, oh, and if you want to, you can always turn on um, this uh, viewport shading, the specific one, solid. Um, you can always turn on x-ray if you want, whatever's best. Um, I sometimes go to this one, though, so I can see through. So I can see, like, okay, so I have the tippy top of the neck, which is what we want. 
but right here it's not you know that's where the whole issue is is where the two are colliding so I might want just a little bit more just to kind of be safe um, so now it's for sure going to move there instead of potentially being in that lighter color zone so if you if you it's easier for you to see through depending on what you're doing um, you can always change to that um, option it'll keep the mesh your weight painting solid and anything else it'll make uh, see through so anyways that's the blur tool I prefer the average tool here's what the average tool does all right so what the average tool does depending on your radius depending on your strength and maybe go down on the strength a little bit it's kind of like blurring except it's more widespread so blurring just takes it and kind of think of it as like an opacity thing it just kind of makes it a little bit lighter on some of those colors versus average it's going to change that hard line of red to that hard line of yellow to the green to the blue and it's going to spread it out a bit more i personally keep it all the way up to one so it just kind of spreads it more and it's going to do this like weird wonky thing and that's okay um, so what I do with everything that I, I ever rig, especially with like hair and stuff, I'll go ahead and just average it over. I won't sit here and like paint it or do it a whole bunch of times because I feel like that can start to get messy. Um, personally for me, I just click and drag just the once. So since we are trying to fix the head and the neck, I'm going to go ahead and do it properly. I'm changing back to my projected view, which should have, yeah, okay, just making sure. So just drag it over the once, and then I'm going to leave it alone. I just feel like this method um, is a little bit, like I said, cleaner than just doing the blur tool. So now that I've done my average, um, I'm going to go ahead and change back to the blur tool, making sure it's still on projected. And with blur tool, I tend to click a few different times. It's just kind of the digital artist in me coming out. Um, you can just drag it once. It's up to you. But the more that you click... Right, I don't know if you can see it very well. Right, the more you click, the more it's going to change. But of course, it's, it's going to blur. So, I'm going to go ahead and remove this, like as if we haven't done anything. And for the person that requested this tutorial, um, I'm going to go ahead and do it like kind of in one fell swoop so that way they can see exactly what I personally do to fix the issue. I'm going to go into the x-ray mode, making sure I am set to projected. I'm just going to cover a good little amount. Go to average. Swoosh that. Go to blur. And kind of clean it up so it's a nice, nice gradient. Kind of smooth out some of that down there. And you don't have to... I didn't mean to do that. You don't have to... Um, technically hey like hit stop and um, move you within the weight painting it automatically goes into pose mode so you can go ahead and you know whatever if I shift select that one unselect it and then shift select this one I can rotate it right so you can do that I prefer to just leave it and then start it so that way I'm not seeing the weight painting um, I think another way you can do that is turning this off up here these two like little semicircles but it's going to hide everything including your armature so you know only if you wanted to um so now it's starting to move but it's not quite right it's not quite where we want it to be so this is something that you might have to do um both uh the the head and the neck i keep them separate because i think it's easier to uh, weight paint that way so you could do the same thing down here on the head I would just be a little bit more cautious about it or maybe move the head down a little bit more. Um, this is just how it kind of imported. You could do something like this if you wanted. I primarily tend to just play with the neck. But that's just me personally. Cause so you can kind of see... Oh, no, you can't. Why is it not? Hmm. See, weight painting is so finicky. Um, that's why a lot of creators absolutely despise it. Um, 
because it should have worked. But that's okay. It's the whole point of my YouTube series is I don't want to edit things because I want you guys to be able to... Oh, that's why I wasn't looking. Um, see my... Um, Oh, it's because I'm dumb. See the, the stupid little mistakes that I make, so that way you guys, in case you run into the same process, I'm done. I, di I did all that on the, the neck bone instead of the, the head bone. So, my mistake, my mistake. So I'll unselect that one. Make sure that one's selected. There we go. Head. <laughs> make sure you are doing this on the right vertex group. <laughs> So if we take this and we go ahead and right. So that is something good about doing it in the weight painting viewport is you can sit here and you can be like, oh, well, I actually don't want that. Let me go ahead and change this to subtract go back to projected and I can undo this or something. You know what I'm saying? Like it, that's not, you know, how I would do it. But um, you can sit here and make changes within, um, you know, and fix it kind of in real time if you want. So we could like, so that's the thing with weight painting. Like you could sit here and add all you want, but now it's going to mess things up. This is when I personally am like, okay, I have it weight painted. So that, you know, within like typical movement, you know, a person's neck and head in VR doesn't really go like this unless they're like putting off their headset, right? Um, but with a typical person's movement, you know, if they're looking down really far, a typical person might look up maybe that far, but if they do throw their head back, it's still giving that gap. But for a typical movement, the neck is now moving with the head, and that's the whole goal of what we wanted. So at this point, what I personally tend to do, I will stay in this viewport. Go to sculpt mode. This is what I tend to do. Um, I really need to make a video on sculpting, but um, elastic deform, you can see kind of, let me do something bigger in the chest. It kind of like grabs the whole area, kind of like the, the blur tool with the radius versus grab, just grabs like, it's a lot sharper. Um, so depending on what you want to do, this elastic deform can mess up with your base. So if you have something very specifically edited, um, same thing, fall off is the same exact thing. Sphere is just going to grab the vertex you're looking at versus projected is going to grab everything. So I'll personally come through with the projected and kind of raise up just this top line. Make sure it's not in the mouth. Right, and then um, triple check my weight painting. And maybe like, okay, maybe add like a little bit more here or something. And for me personally with weight painting, um, I try not to be super specific. I feel like if you kind of keep it loose, um, that that helps. So then we can grab it. And now, if somebody was to throw their head all the way back to where it's touching their shoulder blades, which is not physically possible, the neck is still not going to give that gap. Um, so that's personally how I fix the neck and the head problem. Um, I'll go ahead and weight paint the, the neck to the head bone, um, do my add, average, and then blur. And then if it's still giving, because um, some bases have like the neck already like raised up over here, some bases I've seen like have it kind of shaped like that um, and then some heads I've seen like will have like this like weird like little like divot off so that it does kind of overlap like that um, but with this one the neck kind of cuts off here and then and then the head so I'll take it um, go ahead and wait paint it and then if I see that gap I'll make sure to use the grab tool in a smaller radius and just bring it up here while making sure that it's not in that mouth, if you can see here. Because then that way when somebody talks, you're not seeing part of the neck in there. Um, so yeah, I'll just kind of grab it and raise it up. And then that way the neck still moves with the head bone. But um, I've also given it enough of um, 
get rid of that real quick. I've given it enough mesh connecting between the two so that that gap's not there. But it is not the best idea to just try to move that up and ignore the weight painting because it works, but then it's still not going to look natural because then the, the neck is just going to stand still versus on on humans, on real life, like our, our neck skin kind of moves with your head whenever you move it up and down, right? So it is still a good idea to go ahead and do that weight painting. Um, weight painting can seem really overwhelming, but I hope this tutorial kind of helped make it a little bit less overwhelming. Um, it's, in my opinion, not the worst thing. I know a lot of creators really, really hate it. I absolutely can't stand it sometimes because when I'm trying to like fix weight painting on an asset or something, like that one vertex, like the literal dot making up the mesh, like just won't weight paint for the life of me and I can't get it. It can be super duper finicky. It absolutely can be. So if you have any trouble with it, understand like it's probably not you. It's probably just Blender being really, really weird. Um, so it, it can be really finicky. Just like whenever I, I moved and weight painted the bottom of the head that head part should have moved with the neck but it wasn't so it can be weird um it just might not have had enough weight on it I don't know um but if if you think about it in simple terms the warmer the color the more weight it's gonna have and the gradient from red to blue is important with how smooth and how correct it's going to look instead of having those really jagged edges um, always change your draw brush to add whenever you're trying to, you know, of course, add weight painting. Um, I personally suggest hitting it with average real quick and then blurring it out so that that gradient's there. And then, of course, always remember you can take that bone, just shift click it, and you can hit R and start rotating it within the weight painting menu to, to kind of see it in real time. But if you don't want to see all the colors, just hit stop pose mode. And then start it back up again and you can see it how your avatar is going to look in game so that is all of the weight painting things that i know how to do um like i said there's tons more complex things for more complicated things but if you're just trying to do simple avatar creation you know you're learning how to make assets or you're trying to learn how to make avatars you just kind of need to know the basics that is uh the basics that i know um that's pretty much everything that i know with with weight painting um, sphere and projected are lifesavers. Um, I would say definitely a massive, massive help. Um, always feel free to play with the other brushes and, and your settings with the weight and the strength and the radius, all that kind of stuff. And you'll, you'll figure out your own workflow. Um, if you have any questions as always, please let me know down in the comments below. Um, if it's a massive question, like, can you please re-explain the whole video? Um, if it's something that's going to take more than a few sentences, uh, definitely feel free to reach out to me in my discord server i'm always more than happy to help as much as i possibly can i just don't want either one of us to be restricted by uh, the youtube like um, character limit in the comment section um and then that away plus if anyone else in like the server might have the same question it'll be easier for them to find it there if you have a request of a tutorial that you would like to see let me know in the comments or in the server i have a channel for tutorial requests there um other than that, um, I feel like with keeping it in like the basic avatar creation, there's not a whole lot more tutorials that I know of what to share with you guys, um, unless it's something that I've learned something new and I just need to go back and update an old tutorial. I am not very good at Unity with like all the special stuff that people know how to do in Unity. I'm not, Unity is not my place, Blender is. So... Uh, if you have something you would like to know how, please, 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 please do let me know because I definitely want to keep this YouTube channel going um, and try to post on it weekly. Um, so in the meantime, whenever I can't really think of something new as far as a how-to video to show you guys, I'm going to start streaming on Twitch. One of these days I might move over to Kick, but right now I have everything set up on Twitch, so I'm going to be streaming there. Um, I'm going to try to stream once a week. If I stream more, cool. If not, then at least once a week I'll do my best. Um, I'm going to start streaming me making assets primarily. I'm not really going to stream making avatars because um, I just kind of turn off my brain and go when it comes to making avatars. So with assets, I'm going to start um, streaming that on Twitch if you're interested in seeing that in real time, like real, real time, asking questions in real time. Definitely feel free to join. Um, and then I'm going to start posting those streams on YouTube in place of the tutorial so that people can see it and hear people asking questions and things like that and hopefully that'll help um, 
be another way of teaching and, and, and learning for you guys. Um, I would like to keep specific assets to being done on stream and not work them off stream. But right now I have a big lineup of a lot of stuff I want to make. So some stuff might get finished off stream. Um, and, uh, you know, different ones being done on stream. But I'll try my best to keep it to where I'm only going to make specific assets on stream. So if you're interested in that, um, definitely go give me a follow on Twitch. Um, I'll be streaming uh, later today. It is the 9th of August when I'm recording this tutorial. So I'll be streaming later tonight, um, making some overalls. And then I will start posting the streams here on YouTube. So hopefully that will help you guys. Sorry, the rant. I always rant at the end of my videos. If you guys follow this channel, you guys know that. So I'm sorry today's is a little bit longer of a rant. Um, just kind of want to let you guys know some updates um, and some changes that are going to be going on on the YouTube channel here. Um, I'm very excited. I hope the streams, um, I've gotten some feedback. People said that they think that would be a really good way to help them learn because they can see even more of the issues or the questions that I might run into or follow my process a little bit more and also give them a chance to ask questions like right then and there and, and get my reply. So very excited. Um, so I will be back later. I don't know how long I'm streaming. Probably I'm going to try to keep it around an hour or two. So um, I don't know how long that video is going to take to upload to YouTube, but I should have that hopefully out later this evening, if not tomorrow. Other than that, I hope this tutorial helped. Sorry again for the really long ramble. Um, I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you guys either later tonight on stream or to next week with a new stream or a new uh, video. Yeah, hope you have a great day, and see you next time.